Hi everyone, Rob Pericelli here from failedmuso.com. Um, welcome to what I believe will be the final video of this project, uh, the, the restoration of Ian Stanley's uh, Series 3 Fairlight. So uh, firstly, apologies for the delay in getting this final video. There's been a, a, a long pause between the last one and this one. Um, not going to make any excuses. Life happens, gets in the way. Um, been busy with a day job and other things and actually working on this thing. So um, apologies if you keep checking regularly and you find nothing and you think, oh, he's disappeared. I haven't. I'm here. And I am very happy to, to tell you that we're finished. Um, the, the system is fully operational, fully restored, and we have a buyer who will be hopefully picking this up in the next few weeks. And so I wanted to record a final video uh, to just kind of wrap things up. Um, it's not a demo. So if you're expecting the, a demonstration of um, a Series 3 Fairlight, this isn't really the video for you. Um, I'd like to do one, but it's finding the time and, uh, and preparing that kind of thing. So this isn't that. Um, what this is, is really tying up loose ends. It's um, just kind of like putting a, a lid on this whole thing and um, saying thank you to a, a number of people and, and to you guys, really. So um, if you're new to this um, and you've, you've not seen this project before, not heard of this project before, then... Let me just fill you in, basically. Um, so about four years ago, I was contacted by Peter Wilk um, in Sydney. And he sent me an email. And I was in uh, a little place called Valouf, just outside um, Wiesbaden in, in Germany. I was working there. And I get this email through from Peter. And he says, I've just bought a Series 3 Fairlight in the UK. Um, I've picked it up from where it was, and it's currently with my friend in Lincolnshire. Um, would you be up for collecting it and helping me restore it? To which I almost instantly said yes, um, because this was like a dream come true. And so over the next few weeks, um, we arranged collection and I hired a van. I went up to Lincolnshire to see uh, Peter's friend and I picked up the system which came in three flight cases with a whole bunch of um, eight inch floppy disks and uh, streaming tapes and, and all sorts of gubbins besides and brought it all the way back here to Suffolk and um, it was a dream come true you know to actually have a fair light albeit not really operational but to have one you know in my presence it was like a dream come true as a childhood dream come true um, and basically over, the, over the, the, the last four years, on and off, um, I've been helping Peter uh, restore this um, remotely. So he kind of sends me instructions. We have some Skype telephone calls and um, he sends me components and parts from, from Sydney and I fit them and we test them and we make sure everything's working fine. And we've had some problems, we've had some issues, we've run into some frustrating um, troubles, but I'm happy to report that we've overcome all of those. And we, what we now have here is a fully functioning Series 3 Fairlight CMI. And I'm very happy. So um, just to kind of fill you in on what we've done, um, if you've watched the other videos, you know, you, you, you'll know that we did a lot of cleaning up because uh, it had been kept in storage uh, at Chris Hughes' studio in Wiltshire and um, it hadn't been stored particularly well and it had got a bit damp. So when we were opening everything up, there was a very fusty kind of smell to, to everything. Um, but surprisingly, a lot of the system was actually in really good nick and it's kind of testament to the build and design quality uh, of the originals. So... The, the first point of focus was the mainframe down here 
and we tested all the cards and replaced any faulty ones and made sure it had its full complement of, of eight channel cards, which um, gives you two voices per card, so 16, uh, 16 voices. Um, we made sure that it got 32 megabyte uh, memory. Uh, the original CMI Series 3 had uh, a number of uh, memory cards, each with about one or two megabytes of memory on each card, and they ran very hot. What Peter was able to do was to design a single card where you could install a, a modern memory chip up to 32 megabytes, which is the maximum that the operating system can handle or address. So that saves a lot of space and a lot of heat. So that's in here. We also added in a color VGA display card. So uh, this machine can either display in monochrome, as you're seeing here, or in uh, full color, uh, where we're available through the operating system. That tends to be the MFX version of the operating system. So that's installed. Um, every, every other card has been tested and is fully functioning. Um, when it comes to storage, we've, um, we've not used the original hard drive because that's old and untested and unreliable. Uh, what we've done is we've or we initially installed a regular three and a half inch uh, SCSI hard drive. Um, and on there was the operating system and all the libraries. It's formatted in the Fairlight format. Um, but recently we've actually changed that. So we're now using a micro SD card drive and this is, this is it. So um, if you compare this to the, the, the Winchester hard drive and you'll find photos of that on, on failmuso.com under the Fairlight project page. Um, if you compare that to this, this is it's just insane. Um, I mean, this is, this is simply the card that has the micro SD card slot. It's also got a USB uh, connector there so you can uh, do some configuration there. And it just connects via regular uh, SCSI. Um, there is a, a Molex power connector there, but you don't need to use that because the, the SCSI bus carries enough voltage to power this. And what that means is that that sits in the large drive cavity on the right hand side. But most importantly, it means that the entire operating system and all the libraries can now fit on one of these little micro SD cards, uh, which is insane when you think that everything that's on there would barely fit on the, um, the original hard drive that came with the system 35 odd years ago. So we're now running micro SD cards and of course that has a number of benefits that of course it's incredibly uh, small footprint which means that it doesn't take up any space at all. It's simply bolted just to the other side of this metal plate here which is custom built. It also means that it's quieter and it's generating a lot less heat than the original. And of course, that's a, a, a great thing to, to be able to have. So that's that. Now, talking of heat, uh, one of the first things we noticed when we powered this up was that after about 10 minutes, um, the system would uh, fail and a fuse would blow. There's a, the power supply is in the, in the base of the unit and it was always the same um, a fuse that was blowing and we noticed once we took it apart that th there was um, three big fans in the base of the unit had failed and so it was just simply overheating and the fuse was blowing and, and the system was um, was crashing. So um, luckily uh, I've got a, a really good friend who I, I work with in my day job, a guy called Howard um, and I want to say a massive thanks to Howard because uh, Howard was just incredibly enthusiastic and said, I'll, I'll help with that. He sourced three brand new fans of the same size as the ones that were in here originally. Uh, so it meant that they, f uh, they, they could fit in the caddy that the, the fans came in, the, the unit that they're mounted in. And he sourced them, fitted them, wired them up. Inst we installed them here into the, in the mainframe and they've been working perfectly ever since. And this system now runs really nice and, and cool. Uh, which is great, great news. And so big, big shout out to Howard. Howard also has helped with a number of soldering jobs um, within the keyboard that I'll tell you about in a minute. So massive shout out to Howard. So 
thanks for that, buddy. Um, so yeah, we've replaced fans. Uh, we fitted the full complement of stereo sampling um, and voice outputs, and we've also got the router audio outputs on here, uh, which means that you can have uh, three sets of eight um, outputs, so 24 in total, uh, eight per cable. So it's a single cable attachment to the back of the CMI that gives you eight uh, balanced outputs. Um, so that makes uh, you know the, the whole cable mess a lot easier to handle. So um, yeah, it's pretty much maxed out Series 3 now, which is great. So that wasn't too difficult to sort out. Um, next up, the monitor. The monitor's never had a problem. The monitor has been the most perfect thing uh, of this whole machine. It, it, it behaved impeccably from day one and has done, as you can see uh, here. Just needed a bit of cleaning on the surface. That was it. The alphanumeric keyboard, the, the one that came with it, the original one that uh, Ian Stanley had, um, was working absolutely fine, apart from the trackpad was only working about two thirds of it. Uh, the top third just wasn't uh, registering, but of course now we have um, a full, fully operational, as you can see, uh, trackpad here. So that's, that's really good to have. So we, instead of replacing the trackpad, we just replaced the entire keyboard. Um, there are two types of trackpad in these uh, alphanumeric keyboards. So it's often sometimes difficult to find the right one with the right connectors. But luckily we had one of these in Sydney and it was sent over and, and that's what we have here. The biggest problem has always been the music keyboard as, as Fairlight called it. Um, this took the brunt of the, the damp conditions. I don't know why, whether it's because it wasn't fully airtight or what, I, I don't know. But um, when we unpacked it, the very first thing we noticed was that a lot of the keys were sitting slightly uneven and they were sticking. Some weren't returning, some weren't pushing down. It was all a bit of a, a mess. We did an electrical test and we noticed that a number of the keys weren't making contact so they weren't triggering notes so we had we knew we had some issues there so there's not a huge amount to these keyboards um this uh wooden shell there's a number of screws uh, on the base and at the back you just undo and this whole thing lifts off and then it's just an empty tray essentially a metal tray onto which bolts the keyboard mechanism these two end panels so the the numerical keypad here with the led display and the uh, controllers uh, quadrant here. And then at the back, there's a, there's a circuit board with some uh, microprocessors and stuff on there to control the keyboard functions. And then of course, you've got the, the connections at the back, the, um, the pedal connections, the power connections, slave keyboard connections, and that's that really. Um, so apart from a bit of cleaning up, everything seemed to be working fine apart from the actual key keyboard mechanism itself and that's where we had the most problems or say I had the most problems so without sort of being able to take this apart again because I really don't want to do that um, the the series 3 keyboard mechanism is is very similar to the keyboard mechanisms you, you have in, in most keyboards today um, there is a single hinge that runs across the back of the keys onto which all keys are attached now on the Series 3 keyboard, there is this, this single hinge, which is a, a metal rod that runs in a, in a kind of trough at the back. And sitting in that trough and mounted on that metal rod are 70, whatever it is, keys, uh, 70 rockers, little plast hard plastic rockers, one for each key. And each key has um, a metal core onto which the plastic is molded for the actual key. And those, that metal core snaps onto the rockers at the back here. And there's a, a retaining uh, peg under each key to, to stop the key from bouncing up too high or going down too low. So the, the first job was to try and um, get rid of as much corrosion on the hinge. So uh, we couldn't dismantle the hinge. It was too, too difficult to do that. And we didn't want to break anything. So. Uh, I spent a lot of time um, using uh, Deoxit D5 to, to get rid of corrosion, using brushes to brush out as much crap as I could, because there was a lot of crap in there. 
And we got to a point where we thought, you know, most of that was freed up. Each of these keys has a spring at the back. So I replaced every single spring, which is not a pleasant job because it's, they're, they're very fiddly and you have to, you know, pull them and hook them over uh, pegs at the back to give it the tension. So that was a pain. But I literally stripped the whole mechanism, took every single key off, um, got rid of as much corrosion as possible through brushing and, and using uh, corrosion removal sprays, um, lubricated as, as much as I could. We resoldered a lot of the key contacts to, to trigger the keys because some of those had been broken and um, put everything back together. So it. The, I'd, I'd say the, the individual key cleaning process and, and reseating of every single key and every single spring with a brand new spring, um, putting new rubbers on all the key return pegs and making sure all the metal work was straight was about a two day solid job. Um, at the end of which I was incredibly uh, frustrated and my, my fingers were sore from all the, the metal you know cuts and stuff. But every key was put back in and as each key was put back in it was tested and it seemed to be working fine so once every key had been put in we put the keyboard back down and after about a couple of hours i went to do some testing and noticed that some of the keys had started sticking again so it's almost like uh, the the mechanism had settled or the the lubricant had kind of gone through and not really lubricated. We, I just couldn't seem to find the, the overall cause of this stuff happening. So there were some frantic calls uh, with, with Peter, some emails exchanged, and what we decided to do was um, replace the entire mechanism because it just didn't seem that this, this mechanism was re repairable, the, the original. So as you can imagine, trying to source uh, parts for a 35 odd year old machine, it's not easy. Um, and Series 3 keyboards at, the, at that time, we were talking a few months ago, there weren't any around that we could lay our hands on. And we were prepared to buy one from somewhere if necessary, but wasn't wasn't happening. So we made a decision. We, we'd had, by this time we got a buyer and we discussed with the buyer um, our options and we said, tell you what, will fit a Series 2 keyboard mechanism, which is almost identical. So at least then it's fully operational. And then at a later date, we'll, we'll replace that with a, a Series 3 one as and when we get hold of it. So that was agreed. So we had the Series 2 mechanism sent over from Sydney, which again, you know, is not cheap, managed to survive the whole journey. And um, here it is, it's fitted wasn't an easy job to fit because it has different mounting points uh, electrically it's identical virtually to the, the series 3 so there's no compatibility problems it's just same connections same circuit boards that control the keyboard activity and the calculation the velocity and, and key uh, note on note off uh, almost identical in that respect the the actual key mechanism the 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 rockers is is different in fact this the, the series 2 has almost like a unibody type um, construction. So every key is part of the whole mechanism. It can't be individually detached as easily as the Series 3. But a um, little bit of lining up, bolting it in, drilling a few extra holes in the base to secure it. Here it is, and it's all completely working. We had also had a couple of bulbs out here in the switch um, uh, buttons here. Those have been replaced as well. So now we have this, this fully operational uh, music keyboard. That was the big pain. Uh, and actually in the last couple of days, we believe we've sourced a replacement Series 3 mechanism. So there might be one last job to do, and that's to refit this, uh, this new Series 3 mechanism. But the good news is, is that now this is a fully operational, fully functional um, Series 3 running um, the version 9 software, the, the, the final version of the version 9 software, so it's a full Series 3 in terms of software and hardware. Uh, you can, of course, if you want to, create um, 
an MFX machine simply just by um, using the appropriate operating system on, on a on micro SD card and you can turn this into a CMI and a multi-track hard disk recorder. Um, not quite sure how the performance would be with a micro SD card uh, for hard disk recording. But we've left the three and a half inch SCSI drive in there as well should you know that be a, a, a desired option of the new owner. So there we go. Um, it's done. <laughs> And nobody's more pleased about this than I am. Um, not from a financial sense, you know. Um, I've never been in a rush to get this finished so that I can um, sell it on Peter's behalf or Peter can sell it and, and make some money off of it. For me, this has been a, a huge learning curve. Before this machine came into my life, uh, my experience of Fairlights was purely academic. Um, through reading articles and manuals and books and stories and talking to people. Um, but actually using one has been a really interesting uh, experience and I've learned a lot about you know, these machines and how they work. And it's been thoroughly in enjoyable and, and hugely enlightening and I wouldn't trade it for the world and I can't wait till we move on to the next one, which I'll, I'll tell you about in a bit. So here it is. Um, fully operational, as you can hear, and um, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's great to to have this running and it's stable, and I'm going through the libraries and finding some great sounds, um, you know, some historical sounds, the classic sounds as you know you heard there, some new stuff I've never heard before. Yeah, it's it's just been great. I'm nowhere near proficient on one of these. Um, I, I really would love to be able to have the time to sit down with the manual, go through and learn everything there is to learn about using one of these. And one day I will, um, but that day isn't right now, I'm afraid. So yeah, I'm kind of happy and sad, happy that it's done and it's working and it's successful and I've I'm, I'm, you know, for want of not bigging myself up, I'm very proud that I've achieved this with Peter's help and with the help of people like Howard as well. Um, but I'm sad that it will be going soon. And, and that's, there's not a lot I can do about that, I'm afraid. But that's, you know, that was always going to be the plan. But the good news is, is that... Um, this was, of course, my, my, my first Fairlight that I ever had to play with. I've now got two more downstairs in various states of repair. And um, once this one is gone, another one will come up and uh, take its place. And we'll crack on working with that one. I've got a 2X and another Series 3 uh, in, in storage downstairs. And I'm uh, going to be hoping that it's the 2X that we, we work on next. In fact, uh, in about four or five days' time, I'm off to pick up uh, a 2X music keyboard to go with the, the, the mainframe that we have downstairs. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's you know, it's emotional. Um, I, I will be sad when, when this gets loaded up into um, the, the buyer's vehicle and, and driven away. I'll be, uh, I, I won't, I'm not ashamed to admit, I, you know, I'll be a, a bit sad. Um, because I've fallen for this thing, you know, all over again. And I've not been disappointed by my experience with a real Fairlight. Uh, after so many years of lusting after them and, um, you know, doing all sorts of research and, and then, you know, befriending, you know, people like Peter Vogel uh, and Peter Wilk and, and other people in the Fairlight community, which, you know, I have to say, uh, there's some really cool people out there. Um, so you know, a shout out to everyone that's in in the community as well that have uh, whose friendship I've gained, uh, whether it's you know real life you know pressing flesh type friendship or just online friendship. Uh, you know people like Tony Gallagher, Jean Bernard Imam, um, Jonathan Redman, uh, Andre, whose surname I shan't attempt to pronounce, uh, Klaus Duran. Um, um, there's loads of names that. Uh, I, I really need to um, 
should have written them down. But you know who you are. Thank you for um, your your friendship, your advice, your help, your assistance. Um, Tim, Tim Curtis as well. And of course to Howard and to Peter Wilk, who is a legend, um, who is such an incredibly nice human being, as well as a Fairlight expert and the man who gave me this wonderful opportunity. So Peter, uh, I'm sure you'll watch this at some point. Um, and I, I'm, I can't remember if I've told you this to your face, but you're, you're a top dude. Um, and thank you for, for giving me this opportunity because you've fulfilled uh, a childhood dream of mine um, at the ripe old age of, well, 47 now. I was a bit younger when we started. But thank you. Uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity and for the the ongoing opportunities that um, we know we're going to have uh, with, with other machines. So um, I'm not going to do any kind of sound demonstrations, um, but uh, here it is um, in all its glory. And um, it's working brilliantly and I can't wait for it to go to its new owner to give them some joy. I know they will appreciate it. Um, they are such an incredible synth geek, uh, it's untrue. Um, so I couldn't, I couldn't be happier about who this is going to. They, they love these machines. They love tech, you know, music technology. So it's going, it is going to exactly the right home. And that makes me, you know, that makes me really happy. So um, thank you for, for watching and reading and everything you, you might, might have done with along with me along this journey I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have I'm sorry it's taken so long but we got there in the end and it's um it's really really pleasing so um thanks thanks for joining me on the ride and here's to futurize you know the the, the two x is the next one I believe um and that's going to be an even better journey because for me that's that's the perfect fair light that's the one um, you know, the Series 3, as lovely as it is, um, is just a bit too nice and perfect. The 2X, that's the perfect balance of um, awesome technology from back in the day with, you know, kind of character and grittiness. And uh, that's the one that I grew up lusting after. So I can't wait to get my hands on that. So thanks ever so much. And um, enjoy, share this video, like, subscribe you know whatever the youtube people do nowadays and uh thanks again take care bye bye